Good evening and good afternoon. Welcome everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you all for this special program on Catholic Church, Society and Culture. I'm Piotr Bednarski and host of this event. Uh, we are very much privileged today to host uh, His Eminence, Cardinal Gerhard Müller, former Prefect of the Congregation of Doctrine of Faith, uh, Bishop of Regensburg, a very renowned theologian, a uh, high-level expert in dogmatic theology, author of 500 uh, articles and books, a person who is known across the Catholic world as a de defender of the faith, uh, a teacher of, of, the, of the Catholic faith, and someone who stands firmly behind the magisterium. I'm very I'm very privileged and welcome you, Cardinal Miller, in our program. Thank you very uh, much. It was welcome. Thanks for agreeing to participate in this meeting. Thank you very much. The program is organized by EWT in Poland, uh, the Christian Center for Culture of Mary Our Queen, and uh, Lay Catholics Association Przybądźcie Wierni Adeste Fideles. We want to run this show about 90 minutes with possibility asking questions in the chat. We hope that some, at least some of the questions will be answered by His Eminence. Uh, we are also supported by my colleagues, Bignie Przybyłowski, who will be running the interview with me, Szczepan, Andrzej and uh, Miro Leszek, uh, um, who, and Łukasz Mirosław, who will be supporting us from IT perspective. Uh, the following this tradition of these programs, we would like to start this program praying to our God, uh, praying our Father for the peace of the world, for the Church, for the Catholic Church, and for our families and, and marriages. So, uh, in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, let's pray in Latin. We will see the text in Latin in a second. Pater Noster, fies in celis, sanctificetur nomen tum. Adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, ene nos inducas in tentationes, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. And uh, I would like to pass the floor to my colleague who will start uh, interviews. Big me, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Your Eminence. Uh, it's a great honor and privilege to, to be able to speak to you. Um, you are a uh, prince of the church. You are, after the Pope, one of the main defenders of the truth and the sanctity of the faith. Um, and it is, it is, uh, it, it, it is uh, um, our tradition to try and introduce uh, people who, are we, who we are interviewing a little bit closer to our viewers. So, I would like to ask you for a couple of words regarding your uh, life story. What family did you come from? Uh, what was the story of your faith, development of your faith? How did you recognize your vocation? And what was your life story? How did you become um, the number two person in, in, in defending the faith? Everybody has his uh, personal life as a person. We are sons and daughters of God. That is the highest uh, affirmation of our existence of everybody. But everybody has also his life, is belonging to a certain generation, certain time, to a certain language. Our language is not English, but uh, is a common language today. Uh, everybody in the world can understand it more or less. But at a long time also in Poland and other countries in the world. But I had the good luck that uh, the craze, we can say better in theological terms, that I uh, grew up in a very good Catholic uh, family without problems, without traumata, no divorce or anything in our uh, family. And uh, we had a normal youth and a very good family and a good parish priests. And I remember the first memory I have in my life I was three, four years old, could be, or earlier, three years old. The first, what I can remember, was the prayer my mother taught me at the end of the day 
sitting on my bed and uh, bringing together my two hands and, and we saw Jesus on the cross on the wall and we prayed in surely in, in German but it was a word of uh, Saint Paul Jesus I love you I live with you and we I die with you you I am belonging to you I to you in life and in death and this love to Jesus Christ was from the beginning of my uh, growing up identity uh, the center of my life and from this beginning by the beginning of my life until to now that is a center of my feeling of my thinking that I am convinced that no other person can be the mediator between God and our finite existence in this world with all these sufferings, all these challenges. Only God can be the savior of the world and not the great heroes, great thinkers in the world, all are human beings. Um, they can make a good expression, can be a good uh, example for us, but we have in the history also very bad examples uh, among uh, the politicians of the old world, but uh, uh, until to the present, nobody can find the sense of his, of his life in Xi Jinping or Putin or Biden. Only in Jesus Christ we can put all our uh, hope. And this was also, I think, uh, this reflection in my youth time, because we had very good uh, priests in the parish in our high school, uh, Liceo, Liceo High School, uh, very uh, reflected uh, priests who were, were convinced of the faith in this line of the unity synthesis of faith and, and uh, uh, reason. And therefore, my faith in the beginning, from the beginning and the encountering with this person as also the intellectual dimension. There are no arguments. I reflected all the arguments of the critics of the religion and the philosophies and the natural sciences. But in the end, uh, only Jesus Christ is convincing because he is a word of God who became flesh uh, and the son of God, Jesus, became man, uh, lived with us, but now he is he died on the cross for our for us for our sins and for opening the door to the eternal life jesus christ is a historical person but not living in a distance uh, of 2000 years and only present in our subjective memory but he is alive he's a risen lord he's present in the eucharist in all the sacraments in the community of the believers in the church because the church is a body of uh, Jesus Christ and this is also the basis for uh, listening his call um, his, for the vocation to become a priest what can we do with, with our life and was my personal answer that I felt um, this uh, vocation that he said, will you uh, become an apostle for me, for the kingdom of God, a good shepherd, a good preacher of the good word, of the good news. And this is a message of hope and we can uh, help the people to find the way to Jesus Christ, the truth and our life. And, and how early did you know that you want to become um, a priest of our Lord? Yeah, I was not definitely uh, a certain point of time, but this was growing up. Um, and uh, the beginning, I identi could identify myself with very good uh, priests, convincing persons, and when you're becoming 16, 17 years, you must reflect what will be, what you can do after the matura. Um, mm -hmm. 
what you, what possibilities you have. And I thought one possibility is to become teacher, professor in the, in the school for history or for philosophy. But at the end, I that the best one is to follow Jesus Christ and to become uh, his apostle and to be, become a good shepherd. And that is a sense I can give or I, I found God has given to me this sense, this, this destination surely is not so uh, easy uh, to live uh, in the celibacy life, mm. but with the help of the grace, it is possible to live it. Uh, this is not a negation to become father as a man. It can, it's a possibility to become father of your children when it is spiritual, deeper sense. The priests are the fathers of their community. They are also the bishop, father, and uh, the pope, the holy father, the bishop, shepherd for the universal church. And um, you have the privilege and the challenge of, <laughs> uh, of being uh, the main guardian for the doctrine of the faith in very challenging times. Do you think and that that your education uh, prepared you well for these these tasks? And what were the most important things, both in your spiritual sort of formation and in your education, that helped you prepare for that? A bit also for the preparation for becoming a good uh, preacher and convincing preacher of the gospel, and a shepherd uh, and, the, and the priest and the liturgy and the sacraments. There's also a spiritual uh, preparation, the fellowship of Jesus Christ, the identification with him to develop your character. We have good sides and not so good sides in us, develop the good sides and to overcome our uh, limits. Uh, but it's not possible for a human being to become perfect in the world and it is not needed. Jesus uh, didn't uh, call the absolute ideal figures. No? The apostles had been uh, human beings like everybody uh, with his uh, lights and shadows, uh, but uh, we are the instrument and we have to do to, to work for us, uh, in us, uh, to become credible, credible testimonies of Jesus Christ. And also the other hand is also important, the theological, philosophical formation, because we are living, and the Christianity began in this time where the great philosophy was present, uh, Greek philosophy was present in the wide Roman Empire, the Hellenistic culture. Uh, and just in the Old Testament times, um, in Alexandria, Philo of Alexandria uh, translated uh, or given gave an interpretation uh, of uh, the revelation, historic revelation, the alliance of the elected people, Israel, uh, in this Hellenistic culture, in the center of this uh, culture in Alexandria. Uh, there was a translation of the Hebrew Bible into Greek, and this is also the basis uh, of the language of the New Testament. And therefore, for the universality of the revelation in Jesus Christ, this was uh, very important. This preparation with the, this uh, philosophic high reflected culture. Uh, and uh, later we had also the synthesis between this uh, philosophical approach to, your, to the human existence, to the understanding of the world, <clears throat> and the revealed faith, the personal encounter with uh, God in Jesus Christ in the sacramental, his sacramental presence uh, in his uh, church, which is not only an organization of, of religion, but is the sacramental presence of God in Jesus Christ visible for us and tangible with our hands? We are 
living in the presence of God in the church. Uh, and this uh, long preparation is very important, preparatio evangelica, uh, we are saying. And later we have the great synthesis, uh, Thomas Aquinas and St. Augustine before, between faith and reason. And uh, as we know, uh, for Josef Ratzinger, a theologian, and later as a prefect of the Congregation of the Faith, and at his last spiritual um, testament, he spoke about the uh, synthesis, the unity of faith and reason. And it's, it's, it's very surprising that also um, Jürgen Habermas, a uh, great philosopher of German tongue, but worldwide known. You can have a mass from the Frankfurt School. Uh, he uh, said in his uh, last uh, main work about history of philosophy, uh, the only very interesting question of what is an Occident, Occidental work and culture is a relation between faith and reason. He is coming from more of an agnostic, uh, post pacifical thinking. But until now, we have this great uh, effort to explain that our faith in God, in Jesus Christ, is not irrational feeling, but is an rational act, is an acknowledge of God and in the light of God, in the light of his word, of logos in Greek, the intellect of God, we can understand first ourselves, what we are in the world, uh, not occasionally existing, but we are the product of a plan of God, of God's will, we are a creature of God and uh, not only occasional being coming out from the evolution and, and then we will uh, disappear in the, in the movement of the materia. But uh, my person, your person, every person is uh, loved by God and we are partner, we can say, of the love of God, who, which is God himself in the triune unity of the three divine persons. Mm -hmm. and, and so with the intellectual and the spiritual preparation, you were put into a position uh, of uh, prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of Faith in a very challenging time. Um, could you tell us a little bit about this experience of yours? How did you see it develop? Um, you know, what were your impressions? Uh, did, did, was it something that you expected? Um, how what difficult was it to be dealing with um, a lot of dissent among theologians, with the loss of faith of the of the laity, uh, the abuses among the clergy? Uh, what were the most difficult challenges? Could you shed us some light for us on, on that incredible task that you undertook? I began say since 300 years of the so-called movement of enlightenment, illumination. Um, there was beginning uh, other understanding, the beginning of the dechristianization of our conscience, of our thinking a distance to the Christian uh, tradition just uh, was a rupture in the Reformation time, but not against the belief, the faith in God and Jesus Christ and the essentials of our, the, of our uh, revealed mystery of faith, but belonging to the tradition, apostolic tradition and the continuity of uh, the revealed faith in the Catholic Church and the visible church when Luther said, oh, sola scriptura only, the Holy Scripture is the basis and not also uh, the faith lived and confessed in the church and 
the present of the living Jesus Christ in his body in the visible church. He spoke only from the invisible church as a true church and the, the visible church is only the organization for the religious rites and so and for the uh, preaching of, of the gospel. And this was the first uh, great break and rupture in the uh, European Christian uh, world and the universe of our faith, of our vision of the world, of our uh, knowledge of our identity and of our relation to God. But they, later they began the so-called naturalism, immanentism, and they said our uh, human reason, our understanding is very fit for understanding the world in the sciences, in the experiences, and in the formation of uh, scientific theories about the materia, about the evolution of the life, and so. But um, we are not able in our um, reason, our understanding, to um, reach outside of the visible world and to have a relation to the transcendent God. And there was some yeah, theories or philosophies who reduce the Christianity to a doctrine of, of moral, um, moralistic uh, Christianity and Immanuel Kant and later Adolf von Harnack, this understanding uh, Christianity, Christendom is not uh, a doctrine, is, is not a content of uh, mysteries, is not a knowledge of God, but is only a ferment to, for, the, for the culture, the cultural element. And, and, and the Christianity is a high developed um, uh, religion, moral religion. Uh, and culture in the world, and therefore Christianity is a, the summit of that what is possible in the common religion. But uh, Christ, Christian faith is not an adequate answer to the word of God in the long run of the history of his revelation in Israel until to the full revelation of God in his eternal son in the word who became flesh. And so many theologians in these times, first more in the, in the, in the Protestant uh, sphere and later on also in the Catholic uh, theology, um, there was the, uh, this uh, intense or, or possibility, how can we make a combination, how can we reconcile this natural horizon, naturalistic horizon with the traditional Catholic uh, faith. And surely we have to give uh, new answers to these challenges, but we cannot um, make surviving the Christianity by a reduction, reduction of the eternal per, personal relation to God only to an ethical uh, system or only for a help for a com community, for the population, for the state to have a little bit uh, some common values mm -hmm. uh, which can may make a certain uh, a unity, guarantee a certain unity um, in, in, the, in the society, but uh, we have to say not the positivism of uh, August Conde or uh, the critical philosophy of Immanuel Kant or later the Critic of a religion in in Feuerbach and and uh, in Karl Marx, the atheistic uh, uh, ideologies in later communism, um, 
Stalinism, Hitlerism, national, national socialism, but also and Jacobinism in, in the, uh, during the French Revolution is, is the same line of uh, the substitution of the faith as a personal relation to the truth, which is God, by a man-made ideology, um, which is coming at the end always to a tyranny, to totalitarianism, totalitarianism. But we are convinced that uh, believing in God is a guarantee for our human dignity as person and also for our freedom, for our independence of all what is um, all the theories of human man-made uh, which they want to impose to us and that is not possible we cannot impose our subjective ideas to other people but we have as christians to be the testimonies of the witness give witnesses uh, witnesses for the revealed truth which is god himself and which is revealed in jesus christ and present in the confession of the faith of the church mm -hmm. and these are the great challenges challenges um, that we have on the one hand to, to enter in a dialogue although with the agnostic and skeptical uh, philosophies um, but not to reduce the revelation of God into the categories which are belonging to our finite human thinking. The faith is an opening of our thinking, of our mind for God, but the ideologies are closing our mind and therefore they need the dictatorship um, over our thinking our wording of our language, they must um, work like, like dictators and they want to dictate what we have to think and how we have to speak, how to have to use this free expression of our thinking and our language and to uh, regulate our behavior according they are thinking and I think the contrary is true only if we acknowledge God, recognize God in his truth, would God who gave us our free will and we can put all our hope in him, but we are not forced by him to decide himself for God is that everybody will make the deep experience that said this is the salvation that is a liberation of your self-centered and uh, immanentistic rid uh, reduction of yourself and of the world and Therefore, I was surely in, in the line of, of the thinking of uh, Joseph Ratzinger, uh, but I himself had been 16 years professor of dogmatic theology and not only in the beginning of becoming um, a prefect of the congregation of, of the faith, I was confronted with it, this great challenge um, of the Christianity, of the revelation of the supernatural uh, thinking, but just all uh, the time of, of my life. But like I said it at the beginning, I studied all these authors uh, of the critics of the religion, of the Christ Christian religion, and also the relativization 
and the reduction of the um, Catholic uh, Christian faith to only to a psychological therapy. Um, uh, but we can, we have the same belief like the church fathers, no? Basil, Basil is the great or St. Augustine or all the great uh, Christian thinkers until now, John Henry Newman, if you, if you read, we are reading their writings, we can uh, immediately see that we have the same faith or the same relation to God in Jesus Christ, in his Holy Spirit. And so all those, all those um, lines of thinking, did you find it just the outside of the church? Because the, the, the thinkers of the 18th, 19th century you mentioned were outside of the church. Or did you also encounter that within the church hierarchy, within the theologians, within the church, Catholic universities? And were you sort of successful to contain these erroneous ways of thinking? This is belonging to a deeper analysis. We must read and study the texts and uh, the, the thoughts of uh, this uh, counter uh, anti Christian uh, movement uh, since 300 years um, and the actual dechristianization of uh, the old Christian countries in Western Europe and the United States and, and North America and Australia are belonging to the Occidental Christian uh, culture. And all this in all these countries, we have this movement among the politicians and the ideologues of the woke, so-called woke culture. They have an absolute uh, contradictory anthropology materialistic thinking, but I uh, I'm a little bit concerned because um, so many uh, bishops or theologians don't understand what is happening here. They are living more in the, the inner circle and um, a lot of them have this, the meaning that we can change a little bit our outlook and mm -hmm. modernize uh, it's a form of as a presentation and then the people uh, will come back uh, but the people will only come back to jesus christ in the community of the visible church if they are convinced if we if we can overcome with arguments and with a good example of our life that's all this um, argumentations against the rationality of the christian faith is not founded as no fundament um, what will not say that we want to um, intellectualize the faith. The faith is a personal answer to God. And, but there is no reason against it. And we can, um, we have arguments against these uh, um, reproaches or all these um, counterattacks we can um, demonstrate that all the rational arguments against the faith are not uh, guilty or not uh, convincing and that we have the full freedom uh, and the full uh, right as contemporaries of the 20s, 21st centuries of today, on the level of all the knowledge we have 
in the philosophy, in the sciences, in the evolution of the political um, relations. We have the full right, we are justified to respond, give the answer with our whole life in thinking and our free will to God himself who gave Jesus Christ for us into the death and who opened for us the hope in the resurrection. And that is my conviction, or our, can be our conviction, not by uh, ignorance of the counter arguments, but by the dispute with this counter arguments. And what also is very important, it is also possible to live the Christian faith, not only in this intellectual discussions uh, are not so much people in the world privileged to live as a professor. Mm -hmm. The great majority has to live their normal life in their professions, that they can be sure that we as the logical leaders of the church, if they come to the Holy Mass, and if we are they, we can pray. And there's a hope also, if you are suffering or you are Closed persons are dying. Um, that we are not making only a show, or only an external consolation. That, but that is our hope has a sh deep and solid fundament, which is Jesus Christ. And without having studied theology or philosophy or so much people who never read a book. My parents never read a book without the books they had in the school, the Bible, the catechism, and other uh, books for children, but later they never had the time to read books like me. No, they came some later, they was the present of us for them, uh, but the documentations of, of historical books and so, uh, but not this uh, great philosophical works, theological works they couldn't read, but they had the same faith as me, her son, um, and we can pray, could pray together until their deaths. And I'm convinced that they are accompanying me now from heaven and living uh, with us. And that is also our message for everybody. And the church, the, the preachers, the priests, the theologians, the bishops must be credible and give a good example that it is worth to live as a Christian and to follow Jesus Christ in all the situations of your life. May it be short, see now so many children in the Ukraine must die only for the um, moral uh, stupidity and the moral um, badness of political leaders are more interested in their own power than in the good of their people and of their neighbors. And so much people has to suffer, are mutilated and other bad things they have to, um, they have to uh, accept <laughs> against their will in their life. They are, losing their closest uh, family members and so all these bad things. But all, we, all this we can overcome with the grace of God and the help of God. Mm. 
Thank you very much, Your Eminence. You are giving us a um, a message of of calmness and confidence in the mercy and love of God, and and this is very reassuring because we are living in 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 very difficult time, and uh, a lot of people are concerned. Um, they see uh, they see that there's a, a visible sort of lack of of unity among among various pastors of the church. Um, among bishops, um, among even cardinals and theologians, and and um, and that goes down to schools and, and and seminaries, and and what you are saying is reassuring uh, in in sense of uh, we know that we believe what is right, but some of us, um, the laity and the shepherds, have have made some mistakes, and um, what is the what is the influence of the errors of the laity and the shepherds in terms of morality, in terms of sins of the flesh, of uh, you know um, sexual abuses? Uh, is it as it is presented by the media? Is it exaggerated? Is it something that we should really worry about, or you know, is it is it is it presented as a bigger thing than it really is? Can you give us a, a, a word of uh, reassurance and a word of truth? Yeah, sexual abuses are present in our society and have been real in all the history. But if we are Christians, we have to overcome the wishes um, of the pagans they had. No? And um, Jesus gave us a new orientation for the sexuality, was a sense, a sense of sexuality. It's not only for the uh, self-centered uh, pleasure, but is a gift, uh, is a chance to realize the love uh, as um, husband uh, and wife and, and father and mother of the children and to serve all the uh, mankind to realize the plan of God. And for us, the unity of one man and one woman in the matrimony is a sacrament, a participation of the love of Jesus Christ to his pride, which is the church, not an organization, but a person, a personal relation between church and uh, Jesus Christ, so the head of the church. And therefore, then Paul and the Holy Scripture says in some contexts um, that the man has to love their wives um, and to give their life for them. And it's absolutely clear that we have to respect the integrity, bodily integrity, psychological integrity of other persons. Uh, also, without the matrimony and especially uh, against the, the children, um, they have to be protected in the development and therefore is um, like St. Thomas Aquinas said is a twofold, twofold uh, sin if the priest as a good shepherd has to give his life for the sheep, especially also the children, children, the adolescents, the minors, and for everybody, if they are hurting the bodily, and psychologically, psychological integrity of another person. Um, but it is happening. But uh, on the other hand, hmm, we have to take care for the victim, victims of these uh, crimes, we have to say, and the grave sins against the justice, against God, um, but not only the victims uh, of some 
uh, clerics, but also the victims in the society. But uh, on the other hand, um, the public uh, meaning is only focused to the victims of some priests. And they are generali generalizing it as if um, the clergy would be a group of um, humans who are a certain disposition for abusing. And that is not true. There are also a lot of uh, false accusation as we had saw it publicly all over the world, the wrong and false accusation against uh, the Cardinal Pell, but I know a lot of other um, spiritual persons, the nuns and, and priests, monks, uh, who was, were accused, um, but they were uh, innocent. And in the percentage, um, if we are speaking about statistics, but the cases are not a statistic case, but if we are speaking about statistics, is a very, very small minority of priests who are falling in these crimes, guilty uh, for these crimes, and therefore is not allowed morally to attack or to suspect all the priests. If you are a priest you do, today, you are, by this effect of the mass media, uh, you are under suspicion as if you are a potential uh, perpetrator. And that is absolutely not true. On the contrary, in this context of the church and the clergy, um, the young people are more safe and in some other context, uh, schools or uh, sport uh, uh, associations, and also, uh, unfortunately, there are uh, sexual abuses in the families, mm -hmm. but we cannot, therefore, um, draw the conclusion that we have to put under suspicion all the families. They are abuses in the family, but the family is not the, the cause, uh, it is not um, um, causal uh, relation between family and abuse, because in the big, big, big majority of the families, never is happening such a bad thing. We have so big, big majority of the fathers and the uncles and the mothers are very uh, good to their uh, children and loving their children and never they would do any harm to their own children. And so also we have so good, good uh, number of so good priests who gave their life Four other people in Poland, Maximilian Kolbe, everybody knows it, but thousands and thousands more. And every year they are losing uh, hundreds or, yeah, or dozens or hundreds of uh, priests and nuns their life because of the persecution in some uh, anti Christian. Uh, enemies, uh, countries um, against uh, Christianity, and they are risking their life. And therefore, every Catholic can have a good um, understanding of the clergy. And we have to distinguish between the clergy and the big, big majority, and some, unfortunately, some uh, individual persons who are responsible for that, what they are doing. But there's no reason for
for a general suspicion against the clergy as such. Mm -hmm. And, Your Eminence, we, we have an impression here in Poland that, that these attacks are directed mostly against Catholic uh, priests and Catholic clergy, that it doesn't touch as much other denominations or religions. Um, and maybe that's one of the reasons why the priests are in a difficult position when they want to transfer the, the knowledge of the faith and uh, with the assault of the, of the media everywhere um, and you know the exposure to all those godless uh, ideologies and, and even international treaties, assuming the violence in the family. Um, we feel that as parents, we have a duty to, to step in and, and, uh, and, and promote and move the faith from ourselves to our children. What would be your advice of what are the most important things right now that we as parents should focus on to transfer our knowledge, our faith to our children, you know, when sometimes the catechesis might be focusing on other things, on ecology, climate change, migration, things like that. No, so from the beginning of the Christianity in the Roman Empire and this uh, great uh, vast region of this of the old world, the first Jewish people and then the Christian people were accused of all the evils which were happening in the world. And Augustine wrote his great Distributate Dei, um, citizen, uh, citizenship of God, um, because uh, they were accused the Christian are uh, responsible for the conquering of, of Rome because they let behind the old pagan uh, gods who uh, saved uh, the wealth of the empire. And we have now the same parallel, uh, especially those people in their, their own life, they have uh, their own lives, they don't respect the sexual integrity of, of children, Epstein, Weinstein, and all these um, people behind with these ideologies. Uh, in, uh, in Germany, uh, was Professor Kendler in, in Berlin was promoted, and the, the Odenwald School, all this reformed uh, pedagogy. And, and from this background is coming this, uh, this initiatives to um, accuse exclusively not those perpetrators that don't speak about this person who are responsible for that uh, bad what they did, but the Catholic Church, they are speaking about the Catholic Church only for um, the delegitimize the uh, Catholic Church. They are saying, yeah, you must not follow the moral commandments because uh, this uh, promoters of this um, Christian moral are uh, for themselves a uh, danger for the children and we must protect the children for this uh, indoctrination of the Catholic Church um, because the Catholic Church is a, is a, is a visible um, defender of the true anthropology. And she is against all these uh, anti-Christian uh, movements, uh, who in reality are making so much money uh, with misleading uh, the people in the world only for their interests. Um, in the last years, we saw it in the Forbes list. A small group of people is becoming more and more rich in all this crisis uh, we had. The Corona crisis, the climate crisis, they are becoming richer and richer. And the normal people is becoming poorer and they are against the uh, uh, 
the middle classes and they want to separate one small group of the higher class and the rest of the uh, humanity who had to follow their lines. And they actually, they are assembled in Davos mm -hmm. in a restrict, uh, restricted uh, sphere, protected, protected uh, by uh, 5,000 policemen. And so it's a certain apartheid. And they want to make the definition about the future of the human uh, race and that of the human, um, the mankind. Uh, but I think we don't depend uh, of this globalizing thinking only of economists, of people of money. I think we have everybody enough reason to um, lead your life for yourself, to take your responsibility for yourself. And uh, the political leaders in our democracies must look more for the people, not only for the voters, but we have to respect them as citizens, as free citizens. And we are not children uh, who have no understanding you must uh, be, uh, you must live according to their uh, directives and their principles they are giving to us. We are not objects uh, of this uh, people. We are free subjects and uh, we have also to listen to the people, theologians, philosophers, and <clears throat> all this who are at their own intelligence or who has their experiences in their professions, in their families. Uh, and we are not uh, depending uh, of this directive committees, uh, which has no uh, democratic legitim legitimacy, legitimization. And what is important, uh, in our countries, wherever we are living, in the United States or in the European countries or wherever it's Asian, African countries, uh, we have to be very self-confident uh, um, and uh, we don't need this, uh, uh, how to say it in English, <laughs> this um, <clears throat> Uh, protections of, of these uh, leaders, self-appointed leaders. Uh, we have now enough energy to, uh, to direct ourselves and, and the word of God, to listen to God. God is a better leader than these globalists. And we, uh, it's not necessary to let them threaten us and with the uh, apocalyptic visions they have, the climate change, the end of the world is coming. Nobody knows <clears throat> that the end of the world is coming. That is all only in the hand of God. And it's better for us to live a good life um, with the others and for the others and sacrifice this for the other love for the others than to live in this only reduced capitalistic or socialistic system. They misled, it, misled us in the fascism, in the Stalinism, in the communism, in all these ideologies, in, now in this new so-called transhumanism, as if the human person, person was uh, where uh, uh, a threat for the, the environment or a damage uh, for the earth. The human being, every person, is the only reality which exists, is created for itself, and the rest, the material, is created in favor of us, and we are. Um, 
not here in the world only for the protection of the, of the world, but the world in itself has no sense. The human being is this reality, is this being where the world is coming to itself and where is the transcendence of the world is possible and that is the dignity of every body and we are not a mass of eight um, billions of human beings with a threat for the world we have to be reduced to a small number as uh, servers for the globalists but everybody has the full right to exist in this world and God gave to us enough reason and intelligence to provide our life also if we are if we are so much because everybody is since the eternity of God in God called to become son and daughter of God friend of God and the Holy Spirit your eminence I would like to ask a question regarding moral theology because you <laughs> dealt with this area uh, being the prefect of the Congregation of Faith, but even recently, together with St Stephen, uh, Stephen Kampos Kemposki, you wrote, uh, wrote a very interesting article in First Things, criticizing this uh, recent publication of Papal Academy, Pontifical Academy for, for, for Life, uh, issued in 2021. You said that uh, this new theological, uh, new theological proposition, it, uh, it's a revolution uh, of Catholic sexual morality, uh, we are quite concerned, and parents and 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 fathers, mothers of our children, that such confusion can come over from the institution which is going, which should protect the families. Could you comment? What are the main points of your criticism against uh, this this approach presented by Pontifical Academy of Life? Yeah, they made the proposal to modernize the Catholic. Uh, theology, the moral teaching of the church, because we have the new techniques, the modern, modern uh, medicine, the uh, gene uh, therapeutic, or the, the, the anthropo technique, and all this uh, uh, developed uh, apparatus and technique, uh, which can on the, other, on the one side can help us to overcome um, the uh, defects uh, we have, or the, the sufferings, and so, uh, but uh, we must uh, be, uh, be very clear in the following of the basic principles of the human dignity. And the uh, human dignity. And from the human dignity, they are coming out the moral principles of um, the Catholic doctrine. The, the personality, the dignity of the person. We cannot become a technical product according to the desires and the wishes of the parents. And uh, we are not a technical product. Everybody is. Um, the son and the daughter of his father and his mother coming out from their love and according to the possibilities of the human body, um, male or female body who gave God to us and therefore in the integrity of all these dimensions there is uh, realizing the parentship uh, and the relation, individual, personal relation of children to their uh, parents. And therefore, not all, not all what is technologically possible is also um, morally allowed or acceptable. And that was the reason for this uh, article we wrote, especially um, Professor Kampowski, because he is a specialist, uh, I agreed and gave it to it more authority, but I'm absolutely convinced uh, 
with this uh, argumentation in all the details. And the Academy um, Pro Vita for Life was a great project of uh, Paul John II. He wrote the encyclica Splendor Veritatis that dumb actions are in itself bad and we cannot justify what is in itself bad. We can never justify killing a baby. We can not justify the concentration camps for the wealth of one nation against the other. We cannot justify racism. Um, we can not justify the gulag. There are things which are intrinsically in itself bad and wrong and not acceptable. The holiness of life of everybody, of the body, um, that are the basic principles which have to lead, although the, the technical and uh, evolu um, evolution uh, and development also in the medicine. Mm. That, that's very important. And for us parents, it's also important to understand sometimes some pronouncements of the uh, senior prelates of Vatican, including Holy Father, because when he's speaking about ecological sin, about uh, this new trends in climate change, we are sometimes not sure to what extent we are bound in our conscience by this kind of teaching because it goes beyond catechism of catholic church and uh, we seek your advice how should we react uh, shall we take it as a, as official teaching or is just his personal uh, remark the same applies to as especially for poles who lived in communist period we sometimes don't understand certain actions by uh, secretariat of of state uh, uh, the in vatican to this secret uh, agreement with China, how shall we approach that? Because we don't want to criticize, but we don't understand. Mm -hmm. yeah, also the history, if not all, was understandable, understandable what the popes did and the, the, the politics uh, in the Middle Ages or later between the emperor of the Holy uh, Roman Empire and France, the king, king of France, there was all the, this uh, the competences and, and all this uh, oppositions and so, and then the, the popes made a politics uh, ambivalent one time to this um, part and other, other, other time to the, the, the house of Habsburg or the French kings and all these uh, questions we had. and. This was uh, relatively, we can say, in the most of the, these examples is what was very bad for the damage for the church to um, judge the questions uh, more according to the politics and the diplomacy than to the question of the truth of the faith. Um, surely we are convinced also as Catholics that the Holy Father has, is the highest moral authority in the world uh, for the peace, for religious freedom, for these values who are belonging to the natural moral, not only to the revealed uh, ethics and, and moral. Uh, and we had in Leo the 13th and the coming Pope the social doctrine, the answer of the church for the industrial revolution and um, the poorness of the great masses, the, the life against uh, human dignity we had. Um, and um, But we have to distinguish what is belonging to the revelation, as have belonging to do with our salvation, with the grace, and the principles of the natural law and of the revelation 
according to the world, for the humanizing of the world, that the politicians, we have to, to remember the politicians, that they have to work for the good of the people and not for their own advantage. And that all the entrepreneurs have to work at least for the society and not for the only for their own uh, profit. Uh, therefore, you have also um, ethical principles for the life in, in the working uh, world, in the shaping of the society and so. Uh, but we have to respect on the other side um, as the teachers of the church, as shepherds of the uh, flock of Jesus Christ, the competence of those people who studied uh, the justice or living in, in the sciences and all the autonomy of the um, real categories uh, of this uh, world. And we have as bishops not a special competence for the question of climate. They are specialists and we can, the theologians can come in contact and discuss with the specialists in, in these different spheres and coming to conclusions, but is not a direct object of the magisterium. We must distinguish it and belonging to the vaccination, we can say in some cases, is uh, also morally uh, necessary for protecting the others, but we cannot give an orientation what is concretely to do. That must be the doctors and the specialists in this uh, materia and not uh, the bishops and the Pope. And to speak of an ecological sin, could be understandable also in a metaphorical sense that we cannot abuse the goods of the world uh, only for our own interests without respecting the others. Um, but we cannot directly say this and this measure and political decision we have to follow because we know that there is a great um, open field of discussions and uh, of different meanings according to the so-called climate change, change, what is to do, how to interpret it. And that is not our matter as, as bishops to give here orientations. We can, what is necessary to say that in all things, is to, it is to respect the human dignity, the priority of human beings. That is that is our uh, task, but not um, to substitute the church as a sacrament sacrament of the salvation of everybody in Jesus Christ with a certain uh, politic. There we have also the autonomy in the democratic states uh, where there is a government, the opposition, they can exchange uh, the arguments and they are making the legal decisions uh, and not um, the Pope is not a player among uh, the politicians. They have to correct, to criticize prophetically the um, politicians, but Jesus didn't institute St. Peter, the apostles, the Pope, the bishops for substituting the emperor. No? <laughs> so responsibility for um, for the for the order in the world in the society said give to God what is belonging to God, give to the, the emperor as a metaphor for the worldly government. 
what is their task and we as, as bishops, as priests in the, in the parish, we cannot speak partially belonging to one political party, one uh, school in, in, this, in the sciences, <clears throat> but we have to be neutral. We are there for everybody. And in the Corona crisis, this was not so helpful uh, that some bishops uh, spoke as if they had been specialists in these questions. It's better in this crisis to teach the people uh, to look to God and to find the help in God on the, on the spiritual and theological level. Your Eminence, I wanted to ask a very specific question. Um, um, you know, right now there is a there is a lot of moves in the world to um, change the definitions of marriage, of human rights, things like that. And the Vatican usually takes firm positions against these moves, and uh, they're doing it in in the Vatican diplomacy is doing it in in, in official documents. So it's protesting against the redefinition of, of, of gender and saying that gender has to be understood as sex, male and female, and things like that. But on the other hand, we have sometimes a very uncomfortable feeling that there are many people uh, from the United Nations, from the uh, World Health Organizations, from the World Economic Forum, that are very close uh, to to the Vatican and to some of the church hierarchs. And right now, um, we are preparing for the uh, World Youth Days in Lisbon. And uh, my son wants to go there. Um, and we were uh, examining this issue uh, as, as fathers here in Poland, as parents here in Poland. And we've noticed that uh, the official websites are presenting uh, UN Agenda 2030. Um, and we're concerned. Um, should I let my son go there? Um, is it a safe place for a young Catholic boy of 15 years old to be exposed to these things? I am also very sad that uh, they don't distinguish between the agenda of this high uh, ideologized um, international organizations. They have some good values, but among them, uh, they are the, the poison of this uh, absolute uh, anti-human and anti-Christian uh, understanding of the reality and of the human uh, being. I think they are making here some groups uh, or institutions the wrong politics. They thinking they are thinking to uh, get more relevance if they are playing on this level of this uh, uh, international institu institutions behind of them are so much money and all the uh, world press, the mainstream press is behind them. And they are thinking there is the power and where the power is, we have to be and we can uh, influence a little bit them, but they are, will <laughs> take, uh, will take us over uh, in their program and not, not around. But it's for me the big problem, and we must uh, conserve our sovereignty. We are not a part of um, agenda uh, of of other uh, groups. No? We cannot become Marxists with the Marxists with Marxism. And in the time of the uh, nationalism, the national egoism. In the 19th century, the Catholic Church has to resist against this aggressive imperialism and nationalism, and we cannot take part, we can have to align the value of the nation, but
but the nation cannot become uh, imperialistic uh, nation or the stream of the superiority of some races <laughs> or other races. Uh, we are reading, uh, laughing now uh, today, but in these times, this was very dangerous. This wrong ideologies, because all the ideologies are very dangerous uh, for the mankind and very murderous. Um, they have so much victims, and we see now also just the victims of this vogue ideology, gender ideology, <clears throat> with the changing uh, of uh, the sex is nothing more than a castration of boys and mutilation of the genitals of the uh, uh, girls and, and, and women. There's nothing more. They are making the propaganda. This is, is, a, is your autonomous um, self-destination, but in reality is a destruction of the integrity of your body and your soul. And we have in the prophetical voice to resist it and to protect the dignity of everybody and to teach the people for the great um, chance to develop your own identity as men or women, to become father and mother. Nobody, there is not an abstract human being human being, everybody is created as men, as uh, women, in the likeness um, and similarity of God, the image of God. And that's, that is our message. We have the good message we have to teach and to testify uh, also for the young people that then don't become the victims of this dangerous and uh, destructive uh, ideologies. And we have made a good analysis and not to make wrong partnerships with this uh, people, people of power, the globalists, who are the true enemies of the mankind. Their the propaganda is so we are the best, we want the best for the uh, human being, but all this uh, genderism is against the modern biology, also the biology against the sciences and absolutely against our uh, revealed basis of our anthropology. Your Eminence, uh, we are coming closer to the end of this interview. At the end, we would like to hear from you some uh, words of hope but also some ref reflection on the legacy of your of your master of your uh, of someone you whom you knew so well pope benedict 16th and your friend cardinal pell what are the messages of these two great people to us today and what should we keep for us as as catholics mm -hmm. in poland in switzerland in other countries what is the legacy of those people Unfortunately, they gave us to, to us the last words, the spiritual testament of Benedict XVI, and uh, some articles uh, of uh, George Pell, Cardinal Pell, and uh, interviews he gave in the, in the last time, uh, and also his three volumes uh, of the, the diary, these letters, of the uh, prison, when he was uh, in the prison uh, for 100 days uh, as an innocent man. Um, that is a, is a great testimony he gave for us uh, to be innocent and to be in the castle and to give a great witness for, um, for um, the identity with the suffering Lord who was also died innocently on the cross of the Romans, of the justice, of the tribunal of this 
time of the tribunal of uh, selfish human beings. Um, and the last words of uh, Benedict XVI was, um, my Lord, I love you, Jesus, I love you. Jesu ufam tobie. All my confidence in you for Jesus Christ, like um, Fausti, uh, Mother Faustina uh, Kowalski. And uh, I think if you are in the last minute of your life, and that is a summary of your life, that you can put all your hope in Jesus. And that is the best message he gave to others. Great books he wrote about Jesus of Nazareth, the personal relation to him with all the other uh, theological scientific studies. But at the end, in the beginning, is a personal relation. And also he said, he gave the testimony that he learned from his mother the personal relation to Jesus, just as she, she as a child, and, and later as uh, with 95 years, after this long time of human life, with all the struggles, with all the challenges, with all the defamation he had uh, to suffer, with the unjust, injustice of this world, and then to say the worst words coming out of your lips. Jesus, I love you. Or oh Lord, I love you. Jesus is the Lord. That is a basic confession of our uh, Christian uh, faith. It is the center of all the fundament of our fragile existence in this world. And this is a hope for the eternal life, eternal life, not only uh, prolonging of the life, more, more, more days, more time, more time, more time, but the etern eternity is the experience of the full presence of God in us. And that is the new integration of all our dimensions, body, society, the communion of all the saints, the family of God, we are together. We will see again all those people who lived together with us, our parents, grandparents, our brothers, sisters. Um, we can, for me, very interesting, can discuss dialogue with St. Augustine, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, and John Henry Newman and other great figures, the saints. Um, and that, that is a, the hope we have in Jesus Christ, the, the suffering Lord on the cross and the risen Lord in his resurrection. And then we believe in the resurrection of the flesh, body, soul, and the eternal life. And I think there is no convincing alternative among all the philosophies and all the visions of the world we can study during the last 5,000 years in all cultures. I think we can put our hope in life and death to Jesus Christ, Jesus of Amtobia. Jesus, I love you. I believe in you. Thank you very much. Uh, we promised the, the audience to uh, bring one question or some questions from the chat. I will ask one question which came from the viewer of this broadcasting. Uh, this is question, in your eminence opinion, what should the Catholic Church place the greatest focus on? What should 
Catholic Church concentrate in its teaching today, facing such a great decline, the great reduction in faith and breakdown of morals in Europe. So what would be the recommendation for Europe, which faces uh, disappearance of Christianity? Just a, 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 a short comment that would be useful yeah. because we promised to answer some of the questions. I think a new concentration to Jesus Christ is not only a person, only a, um, a model for us, a modern model for us, uh, but he is uh, the real presence of God. And this real presence is also given of Jesus Christ, also in the Eucharist. And we have to live as Christians in the liturgy and also in our personal life. Uh, and Jesus didn't promise us uh, absolute harmony with the world and with our contemporaries. He promised us also uh, defamation and persecution, uh, all this during the 2000 years of Christians, also the, the Jewish people which are belonging to us in the same long history of Revelation, the Old Testament, and also they were persecuted uh, just in the pre-Christian time, times in the, the Persians and then the other uh, great powers, Egypt and then the Romans, because of their belief in the one and true God. If they had said, oh, we have so much other gods and our gods, your gods, but they said, there's only the one God, the creator of the world and of everybody. And he gave to us this mission to give a testimony of the uniqueness of God and the dignity of life. Uh, and we are in this great tradition. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who became man, the Word of God, who became flesh. Um, and therefore, we are in the imitation of Jesus Christ uh, in his suffering, the death on the cross, but also in the hope for the resurrection. And very important is, I think, on the one hand, the dialogue and the transmission of the faith in a good teaching, a good catechesis to the young people. But we can nobody convince if we are not ourselves convinced. Mm -hmm. And our the listeners of the gospel and of the teaching of the church, they had an instinctive feeling if you are only the promoters of a theory or if we are the apostles of Jesus Christ and if in our words is speaking Jesus Christ himself because we cannot be the mediator between God and uh, all the mankind but it's only Jesus Christ but he is speaking and working through our hands, through our mouth, and through our uh, friendly presentation of the good message. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, to finish our meeting, we would like to thank you very much for, for this very inspiring thoughts and, and reflections and would like to ask for us, for our audience, for your, uh, for your blessing uh, as, a, as a bishop, for, 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 for the audience and, and for those of our families. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, giving in Latin because so many people will listen to us and Latin is the language, official language of the Catholic Church in the Western Latin world. Dominus Vobiscum, et, et, et benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Ich mal ganz euch jetzt. Ich sehe die Durchschwente. Amen. Gut gesagt. Gut gesagt. Gut gesagt. God bless you. Gut. Schönen guten Abend. Schönen guten Abend. Spogiem. Spogiem. Thank <laughs> you.